It's great to be here today with Architectural Digest. To, to be a part of uh, this shoot, is, it's like a dream come true. This is a Frank Gehry home, and it was really an artist's loft. It was built in the late 60s, early 70s. I'm very fortunate to be really a caretaker of this house. The house is remarkable, and it changes throughout the course of the day because of the light and how the light uh, plays a big, big part of the aesthetic. When I first got the house, I thought it was really important to reach out to talk to Frank Geary and to get his experience of making the house and, and why he designed it and all that, and invited him up to have a, a drink, and we were having a party, and he sat up in the upper loft, and he said, this is my favorite spot. And this was a big, big transition for him because it was his first time to really build a home, the way, not a home, but a studio, uh, the way he wanted to. And certainly the choice of material with the corrugated tin was revolutionary at the time. It started off with a small little horse shed, and they took that idea and ran with it and they expanded it. The notion is that the interior can change for the need of the artist or whoever is working in here, but the exterior will stay the same. My favorite part of this room is, is really the wood. And it has a practical reason as well because it's so loud in here because of the Italian plaster and the kids. Once it all gets ramped up and the volume gets really high, it can be deafening. So this helps to sort of bring it down and help to quiet the house. It was never really designed for a family. Um, so you have to make modifications. But what's great about it is you know where everybody is in the house at any one given moment. So they don't, there's no separation. You don't lose your kids or you lose anybody. Which is nice, I like the intimacy, even with the great volume that you have here. Trying to design and decorate a house like this is very, very challenging because I think it looks great with nothing in it. But you want to be comfortable um, and you want it to be warm. And I think sometimes with a lot of modern homes, they look great, but they're not warm. You don't want to sit down. And this is a family home, and we want it to be inviting and comfortable and casual and relaxed so you're not uptight about things. Especially with kids, you just can't worry about things getting, you know, stains on them or, or things like that. Well, because this is an, an artist's loss, I think it inspires a lot of people to be creative. And it's nice to see this space being used in that way. And certainly with the kids up in the loft where they're painting or sculpting, it's really nice to see that it's really what this house is about. It's about creativity um, and people that come through, the artists that come through, it's, it's nice to, to see them get inspired by it and they inspire us as well. And then the land is another important thing, it's really to be connected to the land. I grew up in the country and I think that's really when you find your center is, is in the, outside in the land and interacting with the trees and the plants and the animals, certainly. We have four mini donkeys, uh, East and Weston, Styx and Mabel, uh, a tortoise named Clover, a pig named Hank, uh, two goats, and tons of chickens, and three dogs. Uh, so it's good, it's nice that the kids have this and they have this space that's protected and they can go off and have their private time and explore on their own. And my daughter Tulu has really embraced the garden and spends a lot of time up there, either cutting flowers or cutting the vegetables and then bringing them down and cooking. I think that, to me, gives me so much satisfaction to know that she's doing that. And it's fun here, I mean, it, it's a, like I said, you, you're a caretaker of a house and you have to be very careful to uh, nurture it and sustain it and hand it on to someone else eventually. Mm -hmm.